Um, use internal field names. <laughs> Return values have OWS appended to the front. If you've ever used the SharePoint web service, you know this because when it comes back, you get this ugly XML document with OS in front of everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look up and people fields are returned this way. You feel like if you again, if you've, you've used the web services, that's how they're returned. Um, when you create a new item, check for a new item ID. When you update an item, check for the item ID. If the item ID is null, something's gone wrong. That's your first indication that you should check for you should check for errors. Everybody got that? This is just quick checking. I'm trying to speed up because I want you guys to ask questions uh, after this. Um, Development tips. Limit rows return using camel. That's obvious, uh, especially in SharePoint. You don't want to make a call to a list and get 2,000 items and get bogged down. You want to limit it. You want to you want to use pagination as much as possible. Um, don't call the web services until you actually need it. Uh, that's why you have async. That's why you have async calls. You call it when you need it. It'll let you know when it's done. It'll give it. will give you the information. Um, uh, attributes are awesome. Actually, we use a lot of custom attributes at QuizCom. We'll actually put custom attributes into all our elements just so that we know we can access them. And jQuery is fantastic at getting a hold of all these custom attributes on any element that, that we have. Does everybody know what I mean by attributes are awesome? Like, like we have sometimes on our, on our input item, we'll have an attribute called uh, wiki plus data. Wiki plus is one of our products. I, and literally, I can call, I can get a hold of that attribute by saying wiki plus data. jQuery takes care of everything for me. You can even use it as a selector if you're familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with, um, what's that called? Oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Sorry, I can't remember what it's called. Ah. <sighs> My recommendation to you uh, when you're developing with jQuery is use whatever tool you are comfortable with. Some people love Visual Studio, some people hate Visual Studio. Some people hate SharePoint Designer, some people just don't like SharePoint Designer. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing that I recommend is Aptena. Uh, it's a full JavaScript IDE. It's got great IntelliSense, but don't kid yourself, so does Visual Studio, because uh, jQuery has released something called VS Doc. It's, uh, it, it actually does the autocomplete IntelliSense inside Visual Studio for you for jQuery. So as you're typing uh, jQuery commands, it will fill, it will give you a, a list of things of autocomplete information. It's actually quite nice. Has everybody heard of VS Doc for jQuery? No? Write that down. That's important. That's important stuff right there. Uh, some people like to use Notepad, but I haven't used Notepad since I built my first HTML page. And uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm old. Um, and, and bracket matching is impossible, especially considering how encapsulated and uh, the hierarchy of a SharePoint of a jQuery request can be. It'd be it'd be difficult. Some people like to like a challenge. So if you like a challenge, Notepad. If you like IntelliSense, Visual Studio, or something like App, Patna. So you're saying even Notepad plus plus? Is no, good yeah. Notepad plus plus does bracket match. It does. Yeah, it does. yeah. Notepad that, plus plus. That's how long. That's I've, how long I haven't used Notepad for. I've de I've developed a Notepad before. Yeah, yeah. I, I my first Did web page really was made a Notepad. It was a Toronto Maple Leafs web page. I made a Notepad. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. It only had like three pages. It's a great way to learn a language. Hours. What was that? It's a great way to learn a language. It's a great way to learn a language. It's not a great way to maintain and develop oh. a language. So I would, <laughs> recommend, I would recommend Visual Studio or something like that. No, I, I like Visual Studio. I don't have a problem with it. Some people think it's a little clunky. Some people think it's a little slow. It requires a lot of resources. But when it comes to developing for SharePoint, you're eventually going to use it. You're eventually going to use it. So why fight it? Oh, so can I ask then? So, what's a good practice? So, you, if you're if you're testing your jQuery yep. locally on your dev machine, yep. but you're trying to work with a pre-rendered page that doesn't exist until it's rendered on your browser. So, what do you do? Take a snapshot of the HTML. Like, what's the best way to work with the objects on the page that's already that you're yeah, testing? Yeah, as, you, as you're building your. Some program. people like to crack open a content editor web part on the page and just start going from there. Uh, you, but like, then you don't take advantage of like uh, debugging you features can. of Google Studio. Well, sure you can. You can use the IE toolbar. To you, can, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can use the IE developer toolbar as well. 
use Firefox, uh, you can do the you can use fire, you can use, you can use Firebug. Like once you put that JavaScript on the page in the Conrad error web part, you can attach Visual Studio to the I, to Internet Explorer process and get get full access to the DOM and, and debug it that way. Um, but you have to actually there's an option you have to turn off uh, in in Internet Explorer, uh, which says do not allow external debuggers. I think it's called right. Is that the Denial script debuggers, you gotta turn that off. Or you can just use a developer toolbar and you're good to go, or Firebug, or whatever other thing. Like I said, use what you're comfortable with. The most popular things are Firebug, the internet, uh, IE developer toolbar, and Visual Studio to debug the, uh, the client side stuff. Uh, more on debugging. If you've done JavaScript, you know about alerts. Put an alert everywhere. Sometimes I throw in random variables that don't exist just so I get a random breakpoint so I can start from there. Um, now here we go. Firefox. We we're a little bit. You're a little bit ahead of uh, ahead of us. Firefox. And the IE, this, this is what I use most often. I actually use the IE, IE developer toolbar. It's actually gotten really good. Like I know some people say that Fire, Firebug is the best, but I personally prefer the IE developer toolbar. Uh, who has a preference? Firebug versus Firebug? All right, IE developer toolbar. Oh wow, it's like uh, the people who actually answered. It's a 50-50 there. You, like I said, use whatever you're comfortable with. My personal preference is this, um, but if you obviously Firebug is, is very good as well. Uh, now we're all familiar with the common errors. Uh, usually, if you get an object uh, object expected error or object doesn't support method, your your library probably didn't load. Uh, make sure you don't load scripts more than once. This is actually crucial when it comes to jQuery. Um, is everybody familiar with the jQuery command on resolve no com um, no conflicts? Because jQuery uses the dollar the, the, the dollar sign for for its uh, for its uh, token, uh, that actually may collide with other things. Uh, one one time that I actually found this to happen in SharePoint was in a picture library. Uh, it also uses the dollar sign token, and then you have collisions that way. So. Try to only load it once. Uh, maybe make an additional page head control, which checks to make that other uh, other jQuery libraries that already haven't been loaded and things like that. Check your braces. Make sure you're in lines with semicolons and check for missing quotes. These are all common sense things. I'm not gonna. If you've developed the, if you've developed in JavaScript, you're you're good to go from this perspective. Uh, this, at this point, does anybody have any questions? Any at all? You mentioned that Microsoft maintains a repository. That um, yes, yeah, it's, it's called CDN, right? So, to that effect, the question what's Microsoft's take on SD services and jQuery? What's their, their position? Well, I'll put it to you this way: uh, when you get Visual Studio 2010, you make a web application. Uh, it already puts, it puts jQuery in a script folder for you right off the bat. Uh, jQuery is now there's now a VS doc supported by Microsoft, and they're and they're storing it on a, on a repository for you. So, my take on it is Microsoft's all for jQuery. Uh, that's a lot of support to throw jQuery's way, uh, without officially ever coming out and saying we, you know, jQuery is awesome. But think about it. Open Visual Studio, fire up an internet, uh, a web application project. You'll have a jQuery VS doc and a jQuery doc right there, right off the bat. Uh, so that's a lot of inclusion. Uh, that's a lot of support. So uh, the, my take on it is they're down with it. And also on Coplex, uh, that's where OSP Web Services is, and Coplex is Microsoft maintained, is it not? Yeah. So, so I'm saying they're, they're all they're gun ho jQuery for sure. I, th I think they're gun ho anything that makes uh, SharePoint adoption easier and quicker. And jQuery is definitely one of those things. I feel like I said jQuery four thousand times. All right. Uh, a very very. Is there any other questions before I do a very very simple demo? How do you manage uh, multiple versions of uh, one way we do it over at Quizcom is we actually rewrite the JavaScript, uh, the jQuery library, so that it uses a different do token that, rather than dollar sign. Uh, we use uh, we actually have dollar sign kw uh, as our token, which is Quizcom. Um, it's it's actually one line that you have to modify in a jQuery library uh, that allows that completely avoids collisions with other jQuery libraries. Uh, it's basically where it takes the jQuery object, which is actually called jQuery and assigns it to the dollar sign token. You just change that to dollar sign KW or what's the name of your company? McCarthy. Sorry? McCarthy. McCarthy Tate. Dollar sign MT. There you go. Or use the full name. Uh, you can you can change it to whatever you want. There's also a, a method in jQuery called 
I think it's called resolve conflicts or no conflicts, which which all is it no conflicts, uh, which also will help you with that. What if you have multiple parties in different versions, and it's not your company you using different third parties that have different versions? I would say it's their responsibility to take care of that. Like, like I said, I'm a third party. We work, I'm, I'm not a third party. I work for a third party, uh, ISV, and the way we took care of it was. We, we took JavaScript, we took the jQuery library, we modified it so that it had our own unique token, and we went from there. Uh, if 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 you if you have third-party components that don't do the same thing, perhaps report to them. Say, hey, that's that's a problem, especially if you're causing problems with other. Because SharePoint does use a dollar sign uh, token as well, and you can have conflicts. Any other questions? No. All right. This is a, just a very quick demo. I just, I just want to make. I just want to put together. This is not my laptop, by the way. So, my desk, this desktop is disturbingly. Oh, how do I get it up there? You want to duplicate? Yeah, I'm going to duplicate. So, anybody, can anybody think of any other questions while I'm doing this? One question, but uh, there's also another, just like jQuery, there's jQuery UI collections, yes. where you can have, uh, basically you can co compile your own set, for example, there are stuff like draggables, dro droppables, and uh, some dialog boxes, and all that Stupid. stuff, and you can, you can if you search Google for jQuery UI, just like jQuery, you have a, a huge set of uh, plugins that you can compile for your needs. Uh, what he was touching on is uh, the plugin framework that's available for, uh, for UI modifications, things like that. But also just plugins in general. Uh, who's heard of Lightbox? Lightbox is a really, really popular way to, to, to develop an, a, a gallery. Uh, and, um, and, it's a, and, it's now a plug, and it's now a plugin for... for uh, for jQuery. Just let me. Very simple. Okay. Hopefully this works because this is not my computer, as I said. So I have a, a central repository with the scripts right here. I'm just going to overwrite one of the scripts right now. And I'm just going to make a very simple, very simple um, demo for you. It's nothing crazy. So everybody wants, I have a, basically, I have a gallery here called Gallery 1 that has a bunch of images, so just random images, just don't, don't try to read into my psyche or anything, I just literally downloaded them at random, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not tripping out or anything, uh, and I want to display them on the home page for this site, kind of like, kind of like that, uh, use it, I, this is just for testing. I'm not saying this is how you would deploy it. I'm not saying this is the this is best practice. This is basically how I tested and quickly prototyped prototyped a uh, a uh, a gallery a gallery web part, so to speak. So all I did here was I actually all I did here was I dropped a content editor web part on the page. As you can see, that's the content editor web part, and. I said to it, use the use the use the HTML available in this text file to render what's inside of you. Everybody's familiar with using the links in a content editor web part, correct? 